Okay. So there's clips of uh, William Regal and Sir William, his butler, played by Bill Dundee of Memphis fame, attacking Ricky Steamboat, costing him the TV title. Also on this show, Harlem Heat versus Sting and Dustin Rhodes. And the new World Tag Team Champions, the Nasty Boys, and their new manager, Missy Hyatt, in action. The intro begins, and was this supposed to be a spoof on Saturday Night Live? I thought so. I have no recollection of this whatsoever. But it, I don't. I don't remember the jazz music. That's for sure. There's there's a saxophones everywhere, and cameras flying around the place. That announcers looking very surprised as there's suddenly cameras in their face. It looks very much like a sketch comedy show. You know what's funny about this show, by the way, is so you mentioned Bill Dundee is now mm-hmm. Sir William. Yes. So they took a guy from Memphis and made him an Englishman. Yes. Right? Okay. Well, and on the same show, they took an Englishman, Chris Champion, and made him an Asian. <laughs> Yoshi Kwan. Huh. That that's like whatever they want you to be, they just made you. Pretty much. And yes. it didn't matter if it made any sense. Right. Okay. As long as we got that clear. So we open with Ricky Steamboat versus Lord Steven Regal. Jesus, God almighty, what a fucking match. <laughs> this match was the best fucking match. As far as like a straight wrestling match, so I'm ex- excluding Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. This okay. was the best fucking match I have seen. And I don't even know how long. I guess you have to take away the uh, uh, the Will Ospreay New Japan Cup finals with Shingo. But <laughs> sure. God damn, this match was so fucking awesome. And you know what was great about it, too? Was it was so different from what you would see yes. today. In the sense... Very true. I mean, it was still wrestling. But, like, nowadays, if you watch a match in WWE... I'll use WWE for the example here. So it starts out with the baby face getting a little bit of shine. Mm-hmm. And then... Raw rolls on. Right. <laughs> and we have heat for like an hour. And then we do like near fall, near fall, near fall, near fall, near fall, near fall, blah, 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 blah. And then we have some distraction finish. That's mm-hmm. wrestling nowadays. Yeah. Back then, it's Ricky Steamboat, who's the babyface, obviously, against William Regal. It is a non title match. Ricky Steamboat goes in there and he beats up William Regal for an hour. <laughs> I mean, I t- he beats the shit out of this guy, and he beats him, and he beats him, and he flips him, and he flops him, and he flies him all over the ring. And finally, like 10 minutes into the match... Yes. It was it was six, but still. Regal cuts him off. He gets heat for, like, maybe two minutes. And then, Ricky Steamboat makes a comeback. And Ricky Steamboat... He beats him, and he beats him, and he beats him. And then Sir William hits the ring. Ricky Sebo beats the shit out of him. He then pins William Regal. Then he beats the shit out of both of them, and he stands tall at the end. Yeah. I was like, I got to watch every WCW Saturday night there's <laughs> ever been. This is the great... And this, by the way, is when this company was like in the doldrums. Yes, like, this, this company was period. sinking a sinking fucking ship. And I'm watching it now going, these were the glory days. <laughs> Holy shit, what a match. Ricky Steamboat is the greatest baby face I yes. ever saw in my fucking life. Yes. William Regal is the best fucking heel. He, he doesn't just put him in a half crab. He puts him in a half crab and stands on his face while he's doing it. Just the biggest dick. And I watch this and I thought... You know, Dave's ranting about the Performance Center, and everybody's putting over, like, Ty Conti, because she's gone through the the school that Dustin's running with QT. I'm just sitting and thinking, you know, if Ricky Steamboat and William Regal opened a school, and you could, they were only going to have 10 students, they'd be the 10 best wrestlers on the planet in about six months. That's what I thought watching this. Holy fuck, what a match. I could have watched this a thousand times. <laughs> the um, the shine lasted, like I said, about six minutes. And then Ricky Steamboat missed something. And the only offensive move that Regal had to do to get this crowd to hate him was punch Ricky Steamboat in the head. Yeah. And the crowd went, boo! It was great. You can't punch Ricky Steamboat. What an asshole. And he was a foreigner. Oh, they were really mad. So oh, they were the, angry. Was this still being taped in Atlanta or have they moved to Florida by here? No, that really matters. I'm just curious. 
I actually don't know where this was. I wasn't even paying attention. I was watching the wrestling match. That's fair. Did you did you hear the chant that the crowd? Yes. Well, that's, why, that, that's why I brought it up. See, this show, this show again, September of 1993. Now, for you youngsters out there, you may have seen a commercial these days. I graduated this year. Yes, I didn't. I'm much younger than you. Uh, <laughs> you may have seen a commercial these days. It's for, uh, I think it's actually for car We're the insurance. same age, and you graduated a year later. That I... tells me you flunked. <laughs> <laughs> we were born the same year. Three months apart. The point is, you started school a year ahead of me. All right. I graduated in '94. <laughs> point being, everyone, if you're a young, if you're a young person, you may have seen a commercial lately. The, an, uh, an, oh, I'll say it, an, an old tag, an old rap act named Tag Team. Right. And they're doing a song called "Scoop." There it is about their ice cream. Right. Well, for those of you who too, who are too young to know. Tag Team was a real so- real act with a real song called Boomp There It Is, and it was huge. To the point where that's all these Southern wrestling fans wanted to do is chant Boomp There It Is over and over and over again. To the point, it's going on during the shine, Ricky Steamboat is whipping ass, and he turns to the crowd expecting them to cheer, but they're just going, Whoop, there it is, whoop, there it is. And so Ricky Steamboat, who I didn't even know had rhythm, begins to dance. <laughs> he began to twerk. He, he sort of did. He kind sort of, of did. It caught him off guard. So he was a very fired up baby face. He bit William Regal at one point. He was so angry. I've never seen Steamboat fight so dirty. Uh, I did like Jesse at the, sh- at the start outright says it's a non title match. So if Steamboat beats Regal, it don't mean nothing. He just tells you the match doesn't count. It's not important. Oh, man, there was another great line. So uh, Ricky bites him. And Jesse says, he's breaking every rule in WCW. And Shivani says, well, not every rule. And Jesse says, well, what rule is he not breaking? And Tony Shivani, straight as an arrow, says, no rats in the locker room. Uh, no no pets in the locker room. I thought he said rats. Pretty sure he said because, yeah. because Jesse then gets confused. He thought he said bats because he goes, reptiles? And there's a long pause. What? And then Jesse gets the joke and he goes, oh, you mean Ricky's wife isn't allowed in the locker room? I died. It's much funnier your way, so I won't correct it. I I think because they keep talking about reptiles. You thought you said pets? It's the, it's the dragon. Oh, I it's guess the, the dragon. dragon. Yes. Eh, right. All I, mean, I know is I like my I like my idea William, better. William Regal's pets are reptiles, but your idea is that's better. true. All I know is Tony and Jesse were playing the roles of Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez at this point. I'll take it. So Regal, all he has to do when, he, when it's finally time to, to cut Steamboat off, Steamboat goes to the headstand out of the corner, and rather than run underneath him, Regal just grabs his feet and slams into the mat. Immediately strikes with a Cornish hype. Oh, the old Screaming Cornish happy. hype. Yes. As I, I did, called the Corning hash. That works, too. <laughs> there were a couple of instances in this match, and this match only, where Peacock malfunctioned on me. I got a spinny orange circle that would hmm. not go away, and I skipped ahead. And it went fine. It only happened two or three times in this match, and then not for the rest of the show. So eventually, Steamboat, as noted, he makes his big comeback, which is just a bunch of chops and punches. Sir William goes to the top rope. Steamboat grabs him, presses him onto Regal, and then rolls up Regal for the pin. Now, as great as this match was in the post-match, William Regal, it's, it's, it's Jamie Dundee in, like, coat and tails with a bowler hat and an umbrella. Like a skinny version of the Penguin. Mm-hmm. And he goes to, to attack Steamboat after the match. And he swings his umbrella. And Steamboat ducks. And Sir William does a full 360. So when he's done with the swing, he is still facing Steamboat. And Steamboat punches him in the face. I laughed so hard at that. That was so perfect. And then, yes, Steam, uh, Regal is also beaten more. And Steamboat is left not just standing tall, but menacing with the umbrella and wearing Sir William's bowler. There's nothing better than a baby face at the end of getting the best of the heels is to wear the manager's yes. gimmick. It point always out works. How silly it is. So as I was saying, I went to look at everything and everything on the network just said, sorry, you got to go to Peacock. And I was like, oh, fuck. So then I explained this to Vinny and Craig and, and they said, yeah, but you know what? I, there's a link. And if we click the link to the show on the network, you can still watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I was thinking, eh, do I want to do this or not? I mean, can everyone else watch it? That's my main concern. So I click the link, and you know what it says? Your your deal's expired. No. Oh. You must sign up at Peacock. I'm like, fuck. So I could not watch anything on the network. 
So that meant main event was out. That means this week's Retro, Raw, and SmackDown is out. Right. We were going to make it a few more weeks. No. And I think the last week was the week before the September 11, 2001, and the subsequent SmackDown, where I think Stephanie came out and talked about how this was much like what her father had endured or some yeah. total bullshit deal. Yeah, we were somehow going to not get to watch that one. It was brilliant. Shucks. Yes. But then we got cut off early. My uh, WWE network expires in three hours. Oh, well. oh wow. What are you doing here? Yeah. I can <laughs> watch on the cool. Yeah, why? But why, Vinny? Why, why put yourself through that pain? Because it's well, all going to be gone in three hours and one minute. So I said something cool. But my point is, like, you may as well just split from it now. It's over in three hours. Just, just be done with it. It is. That's like saying I paid for a whole pizza, and there's still some pizza left. But I'm going to throw it out because I'll have to throw it out eventually. Yes. You're going to regret when the pizza's gone, so you may as well throw out half the pizza now. Anyway, can I get to the point? What? Let me get to the point. So then I was like, well, fuck. There goes main, there goes Saturday's main event. Mm -hmm. There goes Retro Raw and SmackDown. Right. What the fuck are we going to watch until they put this shit up if they ever do? So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Peacock, and I'm going to find out what they have available now. What do they have that is sequential? What do they have in a series? You know what the answer was? Fucking nothing. <laughs> There's nothing up there. The only two things that I could find... Mm -hmm. God forbid, is I found WCW Saturday Night. They have like whopping 12 episodes from 1993. Oh, wow. And then the only other thing that I can find in a series is the goddamn fucking Monday Night Wars documentary. Uh. There's like 12 of those. Now, I had vowed never to watch the Monday Night Wars documentaries. I remember this. But then I have got a lot of feedback from people that thought, Man, I loved when they were doing Rod Nitro. I just can't get into the invasion. Hmm. Can't blame you. I, I, I frankly, it yeah, fucking it's... sucks. Yeah. Sure. So I mean, no, we're not watching the early days of TNA. We're a, not. A non starter. We are not watching these fact, fucking before, weekly pay per views. Before we move on, I just want to mention: if anyone else suggests that to me on Twitter from this point forward, blocking you. Wow. <laughs> I can take no more. So I think this is what we're going to do, everybody. For now, mm -hmm. okay, card subject to change. Sure. We're going to watch WCW Saturday Night on Sundays. And I made that decision after I watched this Saturday Night's WCW Saturday Night. And I was like, that was the best fucking show I've seen in weeks. Yes. After that, I was like, fuck, let's watch more of these fucking things. So that's going to be for now what we'll watch on Sundays. Sure. It'll be worth it, I think. And then, yes, starting this Tuesday, we will watch the Monday Night Wars. Okay. There's like 12 of them. They're all about an hour. I'm sure it's a load of shit. But you know what else was a load of shit was Nitro. <laughs> and a lot of those Raws. I so think what the hell's the difference? The first time I tried to watch the Monday Night Wars show, I think I made like seven minutes. Well, if I don't make it more than seven minutes into the first one, then it'll be one and done on Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> I presume they're going to keep adding more to the WWE Network, but quite frankly, I mean, what I saw yesterday is the same shit that I saw when they first opened up Peacock on March 18th. It's the 28th right now. So they've added virtually nothing in 10 fucking days. So right. I don't really have a lot of faith. I mean, we may decide we'll watch Ring of Honor. I mean, people have offered a thousand different things we could watch. My mm -hmm. only rule, and I want to make this abundantly clear for those of you that I'm getting ready to block on Twitter, we aren't getting a VPN to watch the network in another country. Do you understand me? I understand that we could do that. But that means that everybody listening to this right now, they would have to get a VPN. And no, I do not. Some guy goes, I think you underestimate the number of people on your site that have a VPN. Maybe I do, but you know what? You're underestimating the number of people on our site that don't have a VPN. So no, I'm not going to make everybody get a VPN and order the goddamn network in another country so that you can keep up with us, all right? It's going to be something that is easily accessible to everybody. Most everybody I think listening to this has the WWE network, okay? 
So that's just the way it's going to be. I don't want to go through Daily Motion and YouTube and try to piece together what they have. It's going to be something on an easily accessible streaming uh, ser- uh, service, preferably the WWE Network, but I can't promise anything. Mm-hmm. And for the time being, Saturday Night and the Monday Night Wars. If you don't like it, yell at WWE and Peacock for fucking this goddamn network up beyond repair. Who would have ever thought that they'd find a way to make people miss the old WWE network? If you don't like it, there's plenty of other shows on the site you can listen to. How about that? Yeah. Wow. Fuck it, I offered to review the goddamn Munsters. Like, if you want me to interview the, review the Munsters here on the show with these guys, I'd like fine. you to interview the Munsters. <laughs> Car 54, where are you? Whatever. Yes, we volleyed ideas back and forth, and that was, in fact, one of Brian's ideas. Yes. Oh, here goes the dog. I'm going to show the dog. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let's see. It's a cute what, dog. Come here. Yeah, let me see the dog. All right, hang on. Bridget's still not home, so. Uh, well, we're pretty much done. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Bridget's home. <laughs> there she is. All right. Well, let me see <laughs> the dog first. <laughs> Come here, dog. She can't hear you through those headphones, Brian. Oh, he can hear me. I yell out enough. <laughs> it's a good thing Vinny doesn't have neighbors. Can you imagine living next door? He does. Like he lives on the top floor. No, right, there's a garage he, underneath. Oh. Lucy, say hi to the people at home. Oh, man, that's a cute dog. Oh, hey, that's an expensive mic. She, she sees my wife. She's very excited. Oh, you fucking dog. Get out of here. You just brought knock, this on yourself. Knock the mic over. <laughs> no, get out of here. I believe. All right. Hey, dear. Glad you're home. He started talking about, is it Bet Kings? I don't know. But they started uh, talking about some... Uh, There's Draft Kings. Draft that Kings. Is. Compulsive gamblers. They had some things to say here. There were only a few guys in the cage at the time, and they were down. So he escaped his pod early to take a gamble that he might be able to eliminate one of them. Which, by the way, did not pay off. But I was told, wait, Brian, it doesn't matter if the gamble pays off or not. I said, what? You're telling me that if you have a net worth of $500,000 and you see that it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Portland Trailblazers or whatever the Super Bowl might be, and you bet on the Seahawks, somehow the Trailblazers win... And you lose $500,000. Okay. You're broke. But you're telling me that you can go to your fucking wife and say, Yes, dear. That's how professional gambling works. Do you know what your wife will say to you? She'll say, Fuck you. We're divorced. (laughs) You compulsive gamblers. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, You can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.